Guys, we're back again for my fake away for your takeaway, and it is all thanks to our awesome supporters from Patreon. Let's go check out your messages. This week, we've got one of our best supporters, David Fullerton. I know you from YouTube, um, so thank you for coming on to Patreon. Um, and I'm gonna read uh, parts of your message because it's a long message because you love us so much. Um, so let's get to your uh, suggestion. There's a few suggestions, but we've picked one here. Um, I've, I'm gonna go to this paragraph. Also, we are improving our wok skills and you made us believe it is possible. We perfected a few Chinese recipes, the sweet and sour chicken, better than the restaurants, of course, and then broccoli beef, never had, had it as good as home, which is great to hear. And we are working on Panda Express's sweet fire chicken. Well, we don't have Panda Express here in the UK, but I'm pretty sure I know how it looks and how it tastes. Uh, so here's my fake away or my take on your Panda Express sweet fire chicken. I'm pretty sure Panda Express uses chicken breast for this. So if we've got chicken breast, which I wouldn't usually use for this type of dish, as you probably know from my sweet and sours and you know all those types of dishes, your sesame chicken, I'd rather use chicken thigh. But I'm going for as close to Panda Express chicken as I think I can get. But I'm gonna soup it up a little bit and get that sort of base flavor that I love to give in all my recipes. So I've got some pineapple, fresh pineapple already cut up. I'm not gonna use all of that, but I'll use some of it. I've got my chicken breast, which is diced up uh, in large dices. I'm gonna take a little bit of red pepper, which I'm also gonna dice up to go with that pineapple. And if you have seen me making sweet and sour chicken or any of these sort of deep fried chicken dishes wrapped in a sticky sauce, it all follows the same principle. Really, very really simple. And I, like, I do like to sort of break down Chinese cooking into six or seven core techniques. This here is definitely double cooking, where we're sort of deep frying your crispy chicken first and then wrapping it or stir frying it into a quick caramelized sauce. I've got a bit of spring onion here. I'm just gonna go for rough chunks because I'm gonna use this to actually cook with. And that's gonna go at the beginning of the stir fried caramelized sauce. Take some of that pineapple and I'm just sort of setting up what I like to call my wok clock of ingredients. So if you're familiar with School of Wok, you will know what that is already. But if you're not and you're new to us, we're starting at 12 o'clock with our first ingredient, and then we're gonna go all the way around so I know exactly what goes in first, second, or third. Chinese mise en place. Now I'm not sure if Panda Express will necessarily marinate their chicken. A lot of takeaways don't because it's just simply easier not to, um, but I would definitely gonna marinate this. And I know that also a lot of takeaways will sort of soften their chicken using bicarb or soaking it in bicarb for about sort of half an hour or so. I'm not a big fan of that. I like the bite of chicken as it is. So about a tablespoon of light soy and a teaspoon of sesame oil, pinch of sugar, and then give that a good massage through. Get all that flavor around the pieces of chicken first before you then crack an egg into it. This egg's gonna help bind the corn flour mix it's exactly the same as making crispy chili beef, sweet and sour pork, sweet and sour chicken, sweet and sour prawn, sweet and sour squid. I could go on. The egg goes in and then we've got plenty of corn flour here and I'm just gonna actually place the chicken pieces into the corn flour. So if there's any excess egg then it just sort of stays in this bowl here. Mix that around. You want to get all that corn flour well wrapped around the pieces of chicken. And this takes a few minutes. Don't rush it because you want it, this corn flour to really stick around the edges of the pieces. It might start to feel a little sticky. If you do need to add more corn flour, then do so. 
Because what you're looking for is that sort of foolproof way to get really, really crispy chicken, but not like a thick, gloopy batter. So once you've got that the dry, dusty white texture on your pieces of chicken, that's ready to fry. Now I'm going to deep fry my chicken first and I'm actually going to make the sauce in the wok once I'm ready. And the simplest way to make something like this is essentially sweet chili sauce for the sauce, but I've got a few other ingredients that I just want to make that really nice, sweet, sticky and sort of sauce, but with a depth of flavour, with some savoury and salty flavour in it as well. I'll talk you through that in a second. But first things first is getting your oil to a nice, good temperature. Now, have you seen me checking oil temperature before? Then you'll know that this sort of chopstick or anything wooden trick works. If you pop anything wooden into hot oil, it should fizz at around 180 degrees C. So that's nice and hot. And then I can just start to lay my sort of almost breadcrumbed bits of chicken into that hot oil. I might need to do this in a couple of batches because I've got a fair bit of chicken here. So just carefully lay that in, give it a gentle push through and shimmy through the oil just so that they separate out nicely. Now most takeaways, what they'll do is they'll sort of double fry their chicken or any meat that they're crisping up. So, and if you want to do that, then you want to sort of cook your two, you know, two or three batches first and then just a really high heat, fry them off again just before you start making the sauce to wrap around. Second fry. This doesn't take long at all. 30 seconds to a minute just to get it really super crispy. I'm going to do all of the sauce in the actual wok. So we're going to start off with frying off your spring onion, your peppers. Give that a good toss through, nice high heat. And the idea with this, you haven't sort of seen this before, is this sort of wok hay, understanding the height of your fire and how to circulate that heat. You can circulate your heat around the wok in a few ways. And that not just sort of pushes the wok's air or that smoke around, it also cools your wok down. So there's stirring, number one. Pushing and folding, number two. A quick wok toss, long push forward and quick flip back, number three. And then the tummy and the head, which is round and round and back and forwards, round and round with your spoon and back and forwards with your wok. You can also sort of move around the edge of the wok there as well. Pineapple is going to go in. Don't mind the pineapple getting a little bit of char, so I'm just going to run a little drizzle of oil around the edge there. And let that sit before I start to move that wok around again. And then sauce-wise, whilst that's charring, I've got some, a load of sweet chilli sauce, some rice wine, light soy sauce, and then I've got some rock sugar and chicken stock here. We're going to start to sort of layer that in and create almost like a syrup that wraps around the chicken, the crispy chicken, which of course is already cooked. So I'm getting a nice char around the edge of the pineapple now. And this will start to caramelise even more. So I've got here a couple of spoons of Chinese rice wine. I'm going to sort of mix my sweet chilli sauce, so four spoons of sweet chilli sauce into that. And that'll just thin the rice wine down a bit. Sweet chilli sauce, of course, in its name, very sweet. So I'm going to use a tablespoon or so of light soy to, to balance that out again. And then we're going to make even more sort of syrupier texture using this rock sugar here. And you can see that sort of crystallised rock sugar. I'm going to pour this sweet chilli mix in first before I add the sugar and any chicken stock. Whoa. The texture of that sauce is great already, but I want to make it even more syrupy 
and go the whole hog with this sort of fake away style cooking. If you can't find rock sugar, it's not 100% necessary. Just use a little bit of brown sugar or even caster sugar works too. Some chicken stock, not too much. Just enough to allow that rock sugar to melt into the sauce. Smells absolutely divine. Once that sugar is pretty much all melted in, I'm just gonna add a little bit more chicken stock and that's just to give that savory balance. I've got it on a high heat all the way through because I'm gonna bring this in within the next sort of minute or so to the perfect sort of wrapping syrupy texture to go around that chicken. Now once you've got this great almost caramel or sort of slightly thick syrup texture that is when we're going to add the chicken and I'm going to toss the chicken through just a few times and then dish it straight out. Chicken in. And that is my sweet fire chicken. And see if it contends with that great suggestion from David from Panda Express. Now I haven't actually tried the sweet fire chicken from Panda Express, but I've seen pictures of it and I'm pretty sure that looks very similar. So it's time to dig in. Mmm. Oh, that hit the spot. The rock sugar in it, got this great syrupy caramel texture and flavor. As I said, if you don't have that, Brown sugar works fine. But for me, it's not overly sweet, even though I added sugar to that sweet chili sauce, and that's from the light soy and the chicken stock. Try this, guys. I'm sure you won't miss the takeaway being stuck at home with this fake way. Don't forget, guys, we've only just started Patreon, and you've got a really high chance of winning one of our monthly competitions. At the moment, you can win a £10 gift voucher to one of your local restaurants or School of Wok. Once we hit our first 100 subscribers on Patreon, we'll up that to 15 and we'll keep upping that as we get more followers.